All right, hello everybody, and let's talk about today's problem of the day, which is all about reaction energy balances. So uh, we're chemical engineers, things are gonna react. Up to this point, we've used uh, non-reacting systems, and there are a lot of those, you know, pumps, compressors, many, but not all turbines, um, all sorts of separation equipment happens without a reaction. And that's convenient because that means you can sort of treat the mass coming in and the mass coming out and not have to worry necessarily about uh, the individual components and therefore their properties changing as you go. But uh, we are gonna have reactors. Uh, reactors are gonna be important. So let's talk about reaction energy balances. So here is the setup for the problem. I'm gonna give you a uh, reaction and I'm gonna give you an initial number of moles of all the components uh, involved in that reaction. And then I want you to answer three things about this. Number one, I want you to write out expressions for the final number of moles of each component in this reacting system, okay? And you're gonna to have to write that out in terms of something called reaction, uh, extent of reaction, or Xi. Right? So you could say Xi, some people call it squiggle. Um, it's the uh, how far this reaction has gone. And in general, things when you write like this, it'll look like this. N sub final equals N, that's your initial number of moles, N sub zero, uh, and then plus or minus, depending on your stoichiometric, stoichiometric coefficient. So stoichiometric coefficient times Xi. So get ready to set that up. Number two is figure out the limits on Xi. Xi can be a positive number, it can be a negative number, it has units of moles, or if you're uh, looking at a flow rate, it's moles per second. And uh, there's only so big it can be and only so small it can be, because moles can never go negative. So you gotta work that out for every problem. And then C, given a value of Xi, determine the reaction energy balance, okay? So here comes our reaction. This is a very important a reaction that you're going to see a lot in this class and actually later on. This is the reaction that generates syngas, that is synthesis gas, out of uh, methane or natural gas. So you steam reformation of methane is another thing people call this reaction. So it's CH4 plus steam, all of this is vapor phase, uh, turns into carbon monoxide and three hydrogens. And we really like hydrogens, so that's why we do this reaction. Um, so. Uh, that's the reaction we're working with, but we're not going to have a stoichiometric mix to begin with, just to keep this interesting. We're going to have one mole of CH4, six moles of steam, um, and then I think we're also going to have one mole of carbon monoxide, and then we're going to start also with two moles of hydrogen, just to give us um, an interesting mix to write our expressions about. Okay, let's get into our reaction energy balance. How do we write such a balance? Well, it's going to be very similar to the open system energy balances we've written already. So there's going to be enthalpy, uh, because we assume we have a change in internal energy and we have uh, perhaps some level of flow, um, and we're going to have the option for there to be heat evolved, and maybe the system is either doing some work or having some work done upon it. So all of these things are gonna be in our energy balance, but how's it gonna be different from before? Well, a thing we have to think about is the fact that we've been using mass as the way we describe uh, the amount of stuff here. And reactions don't happen according to mass, or at least not most conveniently, they happen according to moles. So we're gonna write this energy balance in terms of a flow rate with moles. We're also gonna assume it's steady state, so we've got zero, H in, H out, Q, and uh, WS. I've written everything as a rate. That's with the dots. And remember, underlined for when it has to do with the size of the system. Now, this enthalpy that you've got on the inlet and the outlet comprises many things. It's not just uh, a temperature-based potential change in enthalpy as before. Um, it's also perhaps a phase change-based change in enthalpy. We're going to ignore that for the moment, but we could add it back in if we need to. But there's a reaction change to enthalpy, right? Like when something reacts, uh, it experiences a, a change in enthalpy, either up or down, depending. 
So the best way I have found to write this energy balance breaks the temperature change part, that you know what they call sensible heat, change of enthalpy, apart from the reaction. Okay, and this is how we write it out here. We start with summing over all the components times the number of moles, integrating enthalpy change, CPDT, uh, from the reference temperature at which all of our data is compiled up to the inlet temperature of our reaction. And then we subtract off the moles that are exiting. Note, moles in, moles out, they can be different, right? A reaction is happening, so they're probably different. Um, integrating from reference temperature at which everything is compiled in general, that's uh, 298K, but not always, um, up to our exit temperature from the reaction. Then we've still got Q dot and WS dot, and then here's the other new thing, minus C, the extent of reaction, times delta H of the reaction. You say, where does delta H of the reaction itself come from? It's something you have figured out before. You probably did this uh, in high school chemistry. Um, you might also have done it some other places. Uh, and remember, uh, this C is a C dot because things may be flowing. So it's moles per hour, for example. Um, delta H for the reaction is a thing that's tabulated in the back of your book. Lots of places you can look it up. Usually at 25 degrees C, can be at other temperatures, so pay attention. And it's products minus reactants. So it's the delta H that you've looked up for that particular component times its stoichiometric number, um, all summed up for all of the products, and then minus stoichiometric number times uh, delta H that you've looked up for that uh, component, um, that all summed up. So products minus reactants. And you'll see uh, when you think about this that quite a lot of times <clears throat> either our reaction is occurring at or near room temperature, so we could ignore that whole temperature change thing, uh, or our reaction is um, so energetic that we can pretty much ignore the CP delta T part because even though it's there, it's small with respect to the other terms. So if you're lucky, uh, what will happen is the sensible heat change, the CPDT part, will be something you can neglect, and your energy balance will left, be left just having Q, W, and C times delta H of reaction, which is something that should feel a little familiar to you. All right. Okay, so this is going to be so quick, I'm not even going to video it. For our example, so the water gas shift reaction, as shown before, um, with everything else that you've computed, with the number of moles given in that problem. And uh, note, I wrote it as a flow rate, so please go ahead and consider those as per hour, right? So like one mole per hour, that sort of thing. Um, write the energy balance if C has the value of uh, 0.25, let's say moles per hour. Let's make everything per hour. So I've got to make that a C dot. And Let's assume that we're working at 298K. So go ahead and complete uh, writing out that energy balance and uh, tell me what you think that tells you.